Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm in Blackpool to visit something rather interesting. In fact, it's a new attraction that opened up only just last year and it's a place to go and see all the old trams of Blackpool, including the trams that get illuminated during the illuminations. I've got my high-vis jacket on. I'm going to meet two gentlemen, Bob and John, who are going to show me around. Let's go. Stop 21. Spitting strictly prohibited. Look at this. So my tour of Tram Town is about to start and my um, tour guides are John <laughs> and Bob. And uh, I think first we're going to go into the workshop, aren't we? We are indeed. Uh, largely at this time of year, the, the weather is a bit chilly, to say the least. To say, yeah. <laughs> or, or rainy. So because people arrive in drips and drabs uh, for our tours, this is where we go first. It's a sort of where we bring them in, get them warmed up. And, uh, and make sure everybody's arrived. In the and maybe a cup of tea or a coffee. Oh, no, no, no <laughs> chance of cups of tea. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is warm in here. Very warm. Oh, I love that smell. Yeah. I can't, what, what, the smell of oil and, and that kind of metal rusty. This is a, a real good old style workshop. Uh, so this, it, this is a special tram because it looks Christmassy. It, it was, it was <laughs> in fact, painted up especially just for Christmas this year. So very shortly it'll be going in paint shop and it will be transformed into different livery. Oh right. You wow. might be interested to know that when our painter, our one painter that we have, paints all these by hand. Does he really? Painted. Obviously the vinyls for some of the stuff, lining and odd bits, but in general the main structures are always hand painted. So John, this isn't like a normal Blackpool tram that I've seen before. Well, no, but it's very typical of trams that were around in the 1920s. This one was built in the late 1920s. Uh, several of them were actually built in this particular workshop. And uh, as you can see, the poor old driver had to stand at the front there, all open. So you imagine yourself, you're the driver on the promenade, icy cold winter night. Crazy. And it then starts hailstone. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a lot no. of fun, would it? And, and many towns, towns and cities had trams very, very similar to this and even right up to maybe the early 50s they were still running trams open fronted for the poor they old They just driving. didn't care, there was no health and safety back in the day. No, that, that, was, uh, that was definitely true. I'm just of looking course, at the top as well, so did people sit out? Oh what, yes, well of course. Was... This is a key thing about Blackpool. Blackpool is not a normal town or city. It's a holiday resort and people come and they ride on the trams for the ride not necessarily getting from A to B. Very true. That's a very, big, very Is big that difference. still the case today? Absolutely. So our single deck trams, we have three open ones, open top ones, and one double decker. And they're extremely popular. The sun's out, they're the trams they want to ride on. Okay. This is a forge, Blacksmith's Forge here. Wow. Because we particularly need it because for spare parts, we very often have to make everything because you can't go and buy parts for these trams off the shelf, can you? No, of We've course not. We've not been able to do that. Uh, since the 1960s, nobody had trams, only Blackpool. It wasn't until the Manchester trams came in about 25 years later. And what's amazing is this almost looks like it's a museum, but this is, this, this is actually being used all the time. So you've got um, some skilled workers doing this kind of job. One guy. One guy. One guy is a metal work guy. Wow. Um, this is his workshop. Most of these tools probably date from the 1920s when this particular building was constructed. That is totally amazing. Can I just have a walk through? I mean, like, look at some of this stuff. I think I know what that is. That's a press. Well, it's a torture <laughs> implement, actually. Oh, is it? There you go. I know nothing. I know that my dad had some of these. That looks like it gets very hot. I've seen those before. There you go. Blackpool has its own blacksmith working hard. Obviously, it's not in today. Uh, well, he has been. Oh, he has been in today, is he? Looking around for him. And he also made this then, this yeah. undercarriage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this is the undercarriage of a tram. This is a brand new one uh, for a tram very similar to that one. Wow. Which is actually in the body shop. It's interesting that you're still making parts for the trams because these are, these are pretty solid. Uh, you know, we're by the sea, 
sea air is not usually very good with metal. No. And these trams have survived amazingly well for the, since the 1930s. Is it a special paint that you put on there to stop there? It will be, yes. <laughs> I mean, and it will have had plenty of coats on it. Yeah, I bet. This one guy who's built this, um, when this one goes under the tram that's in the body shop there, he's then on to making another one. And how long would you say these last? Well, in general, the most of the older trams have still got their original frames. I mean, they were made okay. incredibly well. This is the tram that that frame is going to go under. 1934, this one. I mean, you can just see <laughs> the, de the devastation and rot that, that creeps in. That is totally amazing. The, the underneath is the critical part because that's where the real money is when you're restoring it. The bodywork is mostly wooden framing and it's lasted incredibly well but, and then aluminium, aluminium sheeting put on it. It's what the cost is going to be involved in dealing with the underneath it. It's really yeah. crucial. You can just see how rusty it is. almost like it's falling apart in places. The last remaining body of a Lytham St Anne's tram, had its own tramway going from Lytham into Blackpool, and they finished on the 8th of April 1937. This is the last uh, So what are you gonna do body. with this then? The idea is, the dream is, that at some point it will be restored to a nice double-decker, which it was originally. So Bob is just yeah, unveiling me. something. Well, this is cute. So Bob, what is this? Obviously, I know it's a, it's a miniature tram. This was built by a guy and it ran up and down the prom. Um, it was actually towed originally. It ran up and down the sea on the pier on uh, Cliff's Pavilion there. And it ran up and down there and it was actually towed, pulled. But there is a motor in it, so it can run on a 12 volt battery. Wow, as, so, as I love models, and I'm sure there's lots of people that like models, does it light up and everything? Um, no, it doesn't light up, oh. no. That but, would have been good. The plan was to actually scrap it and we rescued it and said no, you're not going to scrap it because he took it round to different displays of wherever cried and he was going to scrap it and we said no, we'll take custody of it and at the moment it's going in our museum. So these, these are old seats, these I bet there's some, seats. if I waxed the cushions there there'd be some dust coming out. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just notice this box here, John. Yeah, yeah. All these, uh, obviously, lights. These, these will have come off one of the illuminated trams. I mean, they're, they're gradually being upgraded to more modern lighting equipment. Yeah. So this is probably... All LEDs, these, but yeah, I remember these are seeing old, these. Old style wow. covers on, on. Well, this is where we change the tyres on the tram. And it surprises people when we say that there's tyres actually on the tram. They don't have to be rubber. They're actually <laughs> steel. And if you have a look over here, these, I'll show you the tyres. Do you know that's a very good point. I, I, I never thought they would ever need changing, but obviously oh, they yeah. rust like most yeah, things. They do work. This silver part here is a tyre. So what they do is they cut this off when it needs changing, and then they bring it in here, bring the axle in here, and this is where we actually change them. Is this and an easy job to do? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what they have is that silver I've just shown you, uh, that'll be put in here and then the axle will be above. This is a gas ring, so it heats up what we call the donut or polo mint, heats it up and that'll expand with the heat. When the axle's lowered into it, they turn the gas off and as the, it starts to cool, it retracts again and it sticks to the wheel. Um, no welds or anything like that. So how often would you say um, tram wheels need to be changed? About 10,000 miles, something like that. Wow. Depends how they're actually car. used, but they can <laughs> actually last a lot longer. So out of the workshop, into the lovely Blackpool weather. Yeah. And so where we're heading to now then, John? Uh, well, we're going to go into the depot proper. We're, we're staying within these lines here. These are d uh, guidance lines, so pedestrians kept in certain areas um, because there's still plenty of vehicles moving around the site particularly as we get around the far side because of the buses at the moment we've got some of the old trams pulled out the front here what we do have is a, a good number of our old trams uh, several different types double deckers and single deckers as well open top trams for me coming to Blackpool as a child it was all about the illuminations and one thing that I used to absolutely love with the illuminated trams. So I understand this is where you actually keep them. 
So I'm very excited to see these. In Blackpool, we have many unique things. The illuminated trams are particularly one of those. And I think they deserve probably a little bit more uh, looking after than currently. So this is, this, is, this is quite a famous illuminated tram. I can see the other one just yeah. over there, which we'll have a look at yeah. in a second. But this is, the, this is the one that looks like a boat. Yeah. I absolutely love this tram. It's, it's called the Frigate. It was built in the early 1960s along with three others the Western Train, the Hover Tram and the Rocket. Uh, yeah, highly popular. You know, we really want to ensure that they have a good future. And I can just see what we saw in the workshop, all these, uh, these lights. Up. There you go, that's what it looks like lit up, if you haven't seen it already. I love all the, uh, the bits on the top, including the, uh, the helicopter. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bit of a tight squeeze. Breathe in. Yeah, well, these are uh, modifications. There you go. Let's uh, let's have a quick walk inside. So it actually looks really modern when you step on the back, like you say. It, this is like a very very long tram, and when I see it going along, it doesn't actually look that long. From the outside, it also looks like it's one of the really old-fashioned trams. But um, I have to say, it looks kind of modern. Love the seating. There's like parrot-style seating. It looks very comfy. I'd never actually been on this tram, this particular tram, but looking from the outside, I thought it would look quite old fashioned on the inside. So uh, as I look at you, I just feel like I could, I could be on a bus right now. Uh, it Have you got like a bus from the outside? <laughs> no, has it got Wi-Fi? <laughs> but the seats, these seats are really nice, very colorful too. Yeah, 64 passengers on this one. This can, 64, right. And um, let's have a look the all important uh, now this is a bit of a childhood dream of mine i always wanted to be a bus driver right so i guess this is going to have to do but like you say that that is not a wheel that's the uh did you say it's the brake it's the handbrake it's the handbrake and so although it looks very modern on the inside this bit here is still all the old, old style yes. yeah english electric you see this would be out of a, a scrap 1934 35 wow. tram the weirdest thing about being on a tram, I guess, is that there is no steering wheel because you don't need a steering wheel. No, no. So you've got basically this thing here. And, and so does this control? So that's controlling your speed right? Yeah, and your braking. And there's and some pedals. pedals down here would be to do with the horn. You know, like your car, oh, right. The pedals are for the horn. I, I love these little windows as well. It's almost like I feel like I'm in a plane <laughs> right now. So, John, yeah. just very quickly, what does this do? Yeah. Yeah. When it's when it's powered up. It's, oh right. It's okay. Like a fog horn. Oh, it's a fog horn. So you get your microphone. Yeah, that's just so that the drivers nowadays can speak to. So there is some or, modern yeah. stuff in here. There's oh, yes. this little uh, column here. Yeah. But the, the main. This is the main thing. Is, is that old. I love the fact that even on the signs, no smoking. This ship is air conditioned. It's not a tram, it's a ship. So obviously they can go either way, can't they? Yeah, so this, this is predominantly there just when it comes back to the depot because sometimes it will be facing the, effectively the wrong way depending on where it's gone on its trip. And this is why they need a roof, a new one, because it's, it's leaking. Old-fashioned trams. Yeah. So look at this. This is a piece of nostalgia coming into... Uh, into this old tram with the seating and the lights. Yeah. Uh, these seats, of course, these have got these wonderful old flip over seats. Wow, do that again. So, whichever way the tram is moving, <laughs> you can be sat facing forward. Look at that. that I did know that is totally amazing. So, you don't, you can face the direction of travel. Yeah. Unfortunately, over the years, for saving costs and things, some of them were taken out of some of these beautiful old double deckers and they have bus type seats put in to save money. So, let, let's go and have a uh, walk upstairs in just a moment, just have a quick look down here. All the wood panelling as well. I love that smell. See, so look at this look. All tiny little doors. Now, there wasn't much room in here. No. <laughs> and uh, you would be standing in there as well. Wow, yeah, you would be, wouldn't you? Really isn't much room. So let's go and have a look upstairs, shall we? Go up this way. <laughs> wow, up here. Wow, I love the smell. Taking me right back. They look quite thin 
when you're standing on the ground, but when you're inside them, they are actually quite roomy, yeah. quite four. wide. Uh, four seaters across. Um, this particular one um, has been slightly modified at the ends here. Uh, well, I'm saying that some of them actually had a bench seat round here, and I can remember in my youth actually coming and sitting it that was the great thing to do as a kid sit in front. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I love the fact how it's like designed aerodynamic you know for the wind but it also feels um so much more exciting being in it because obviously the windows are slanted you're obviously holding like you say holding on to it feels like you could be on a plane so it's great to see there's one two three four five completely different trams all next to each other. So John, obviously um, explain just briefly yeah. each of them. Uh, well, this one is has been rather like the, the nice old one, which would have been, this is another modified one. So it's got the widened doors, flat front on it, yeah. but, but looked quite different when it was built. This would have been, a, this is a 1937 tram, a single deck version. Uh, then we've got the Western train built in the early 1960s. This is another Very, illuminated one, isn't it? Yeah, this a, is a popular it's one. It's a fabulous one, yeah. It's probably the most popular one nowadays. Look at that where he... <laughs> that's amazing where the um, the tram driver sits. Look at that. Yes, he's in a nice little goldfish bowl there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can see it, it, the controls are all polished up beautifully. There. They are actually yeah. really polished. I've got to just quickly look down here and see this tram because this is another one of my favorites again um it is like an actual train in the sense that there's two of them that are joined rather than one long one um, that's, in, that's in fact another tram there's no motors in it nowadays oh, I and see. it's pretty well the tram as it was built really but without the, the cabs on you might see this going up and down the uh, the Golden Mile. And obviously, John, we didn't see this from the front, but um, no, this, is, this is a kind of a new modern uh, era it's got of very modern lighting on it. LED lights. LED lights. These are super bright, aren't they? They look fantastic. You can have you know loads of different formats. Uh, it looks great. It's basically a single decker, a normal older type single decker that's had the cabs uh, altered and it's made to look like a trawler. Yeah. Wow. I mean, obviously they look good at night, but they don't look as good during the day as, as they do, because obviously you can see the light bulbs, and with obviously these lights, you don't. Just attention to detail on this really beautiful tram. Look at that lovely little... <laughs> it's a glass. It's actually glass. Yeah. I'm just seeing one of the old um, illuminated trams yeah. just there. This is the one we're on right now. This is the, uh, the train. Uh, ABC Television uh, was a very early independent television company and the reason it has ABC television is because on it now is that's how it was when it was first built so ABC television sponsored it later on there was other people advertised on it Fisherman's Friend would being one of them but when we applied for lottery money to restore it one of the conditions was it had to be as it was originally built you will also see when you step on here you see the lights as you sit on through the windows but um yeah I know it's quite dark on here, I don't know how well you can see this, but um, such a beautiful tram. Uh, this one is a modified single decker, so like the nice green and cream one just over there. Yeah. It started life looking very, very, very similar to that one. Um, and it was converted, and they had several of these done, 13 in total. It's very and narrow at the front. Yeah, it's so a very bit, deceiving. It's, yeah, it's a bit deceiving because the actual tram body is as it was made in 1935 for the original tram that's underneath it. What they did was extended the cabs. Unfortunately, the cabs and the uh, control equipment was in here created a lot of extra weight on the end and they became a bit like bananas. And in fact, a couple of them actually ended up breaking the chassis. But what they, why they were introduced was to be one-man operated trams because at the time there were less people coming to Blackpool because of the sudden influx of people zooming off to Spain and the likes. Mm. Uh, and that rather decimated the, the How different it is now. People are definitely wanting to stay in the UK. Let's just have a quick walk through here. So th some of these trams, I mean, this is why it's definitely worth coming on the tour because um, they're all so different and they all have some uh, really interesting stories as well. Look at this. this. This, These are the trams that look more like buses. 
look at this we can actually see a tram coming into the depot i think they've been doing some training i wonder if they'll let me have a go <laughs> i already know the answer to this question tooting the horn making sure no one's in the way so this was a prototype tram that was never used it doesn't look very nice uh, but it's just because it's languishing in not very nice place really yeah. it's actually got it's quite nice inside oh is it uh, but it's been it's been restored somewhat and it will be used as a demonstrator again to across the other town so that is also illuminated but we don't see that one anymore that that's called a hover tram bob why is it called a hover tram it's built like an hovercraft it looks like one when it's actually got the pieces on the top as well it was originally a rail coach so it was something like that price busters uh, originally and it took six months to convert it into the hover tram it's one of the longest ones we've got <laughs> Wow, that yeah, is pretty long. 2001, um, it was withdrawn from service. It ended up in Scotland, went down to Sunderland, and we've got it back down here. And Will maybe it... one day we'll see it again. Well, it has been inspected, and it's due for another inspection, and um, hopefully it will run again. Wow, that's that a way. shame that you don't yeah. have that tram anymore. Blackpool no. Bell. That's a Mississippi Walt. Look at that. You couldn't get up on the top deck. It was still a real course. Yeah, just for, the yeah. Deck. Wow. I mean, this is why the tour's so good, because when you walk around, you know, they're all lined up, but then you, you come across something new, something you haven't seen. Yeah, it's a huge variety, yeah. Yeah. And there's some little plaques here. Talk about the history yeah, of part, each part of tram. Here is another um, illuminated um, tram that I haven't seen since I was a kid. The rocket. Look at this. So this stopped running back in um, 1999. Did you, so obviously this wasn't a tram that people sat on, it was just part oh, of the no, illumination. No, they very definitely did. Oh, they did? Um, Where? They went in through the entrance here, <laughs> the, the steps folded down. The fact that you had to get on here in the back of the tram meant you had to step onto the tram track to be able to do that. Health and safety. And, and health and safety, <laughs> of course, came in in a bigger way and that combined with uh, some major overhauls just knocked it on the head. And this is so, a piece of history, this uh, is. So you would they sit level or would they sit at an angle? At 20 degrees. So you, they actually sat, sat at, at 20 degrees? 20 degrees, yeah. That's crazy. So you, there would never be a tram like that nowadays? No. That'd be an experience. <laughs> Such an odd tram. Let us know in the comments if you have been on it, if you've seen it in the past or maybe got some photos of it, but it must have been an experience. So where did the, oh, they sat there and then people would sit yeah, up there, 20 there, degrees. There, yeah. <laughs> so this is a double-decker tram yeah, with um, an open top. Let's have a look. Obviously in the summer. Yeah. Now you would have thought that um, Bearing in mind, you've got the overhead wires, open top trams would be uh, rather dangerous. Uh, no, there's quite a bit of distance actually. I don't think you can actually put your hand up. You've got to be pretty <laughs> tall too. Uh, what you can, can see, of course, is that we, as volunteers, have put these covers over the seats because of the rain coming in. Yeah, this it's is the roof, the problems much. with the roof. But you do get uh, a great view of the whole tram town from up here. Oh, I've lost Bob and John. I'm going to go from one tram to another and, th and through the other side. And, uh, oh, I found Bob. He's waiting. So this reminds me of a tram from San Francisco, but as uh, John just rightly said, they don't actually have double-deckers. But look at this. This is beautiful. Can we come aboard, Bob? Yeah, you can come aboard. Let's have a quick... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Now this is um, no frills in the sense that uh, there's no soft cushioning here to sit your bum on, it's all wood. And again, these little lampshades. Is that real leather? Yep. Wow. Everything's original what you see on this truck. This is all original. So obviously I want to go upstairs, I'm going to have to have a look and try and go up these horrendously st original. steep 
steps. Look at those. It had to be rebuilt. Up the stairs I go. Wow, I've always wanted to go up these kind of stairs on a tram that are so tight and narrow to see what it's like. Blimey. It's very difficult. Wow, coming up here though, stepping back in time. Actually, it's quite a good height in here. Now I don't have to, to crouch. This part has to be rebuilt. So yeah, this, I tell you what, it feels almost a little bit uh, top heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I bet it would like, um, would it shake in the wind? <laughs> <laughs> it you, you can imagine it, can't you? <laughs> ah, of course, so they had tall hats, so they would oh, have to I'm bend down. I bet they would like <laughs> get their hats knocked off. Yeah. Bob, I've just noticed a sign. <laughs> this is really <laughs> random. Spitting, spitting yeah. strictly prohibited. Yeah, what? It was, it was still on the double deckers of 1960s. And 70s, it still had spitting strictly for you. But why? You could actually get fined for spitting. But why would, why did, because was that something disgusting. that happened a lot? It's disgusting. No, I know that, but did it, did, in those days, did it happen a lot? It, it must have been, yeah. Wow. It must have done. See, we don't spit anymore. We're a lot better civilised than they were in those days. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And same with smoking, you weren't allowed to smoke on the tram. Uh, when this, although there's no smoke, there's there's no there's no, no smoke inside. There is uh, some downstairs. I oh, think. is there? But it, it weren't until the last tram went out of Bolton that you could smoke on it. All right. And uh, they, they allowed you to smoke on it the last tram, and that was in 1947. It was uh, the last tram in Bolton. This was built in 1901. Originally, it was built in uh, Preston in 1901. And what happened with it when uh, they got rid of the trams in Bolton anyway? We still had the trolley bullies and eventually this tram was only half of it the top deck wasn't here it ended up on the farm in the moors and somebody spotted it he was actually a trolley boy who spotted it on the last tram of Bolton and he bought it off the farmer with two other guys brought it in this depot 1981 and rebuilt it that's amazing and it still runs today but all the bottom deck is actually original wood what do you see? I'll tell you what, going down these <laughs> steps. <laughs> My God. But, uh, What's really amazing is that when people come down these particular steps, where the, the driver's just there. Yeah, he's up. So you just like you have to kick him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> get out the way, don't worry about So that. all this woodwork is from 1901. That is oh, absolutely amazing. Woodwork. Over a oh. hundred and twenty so odd years. Existing tram out of Bolton. What's left? Amazing. In its original condition, except for the top deck. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Emergency brake. These no smoking signs aren't original. Yeah, these these aren't these aren't original. <laughs> these aren't original. No. <laughs> all the lights. All the lights. Are original. All the lights. They had to be turned on individually. Yeah, light lamps. Yeah. Look at that. So let's turn them all on. Yeah. Individually no, and. With no electric at the moment. I know it's quite so. dark, but it's just like yeah. um, the woodwork. Oh, it's, all it's amazing. It's got the signs on it. But a lot of the trams still have a letter on the film, and we have a letter on the film to this, and it tells you where it's going. So if you wanted to go to Dunsky, you get a D. If you want to get Tongmore, you get a T. We're starting a W. Ah. So it was quite simple then. Number 66 yeah. to seat 44 outside, yeah. 30 inside. What does it mean by that? 30 inside here. And if it was originally no roof on it. I see, so right. Okay. When it was originally built, there was no roof on it. That's it why. wasn't until a few late, uh, years later that they had to put a roof on it. So, something I never thought I'd be able to do, and that is ring the, ring the bell. Stop 21! <laughs> you haven't got a ticket, get off. And this is a familiar. This is one of our lovely boat trams. Yeah, look at yeah. this. It's yeah. a boat tram, and obviously this is completely open. Yeah. Looks like a boat as well. You see, this has got the wonderful flip over seats again, but of course being an open tram, which they might get wet one day, they have to be wood. And again, if you stand at one end and look down, they're pretty big things. They, they are. Can't, can't stop this on a sixpence on the time. <laughs> There's another one next to it as well. Yeah, originally we had 12. You had 12? Yeah, built wow. 1934 35. Originally 12, and they've gradually dwindled down to three. Four are actually in America now. 
two in San Francisco on the tourist line down to Fisherman's Wharf. I bet people don't realise their original Blackpool trams when they're in San Francisco. Well, I think they do, actually. You think? Yeah, yeah. So if you're watching this, maybe from America, maybe from San Francisco, you might be getting on a, one of these. Are they still boat trams there? Do they still use them as... They have they converted them or anything? They use no, them no, as is? No, just as, as they are. Wow, the only so they thing they've done is take away the, the trolley tower and, and bring the, the pole that's collecting electricity to a lower height. I see. Yeah, so all of our boat trams now have names. This is Duchess of Cornwall. The one further down has got George Formby's name on it and this one is Charlie Crowley. Um, so we've given them these names in recent years to add a little bit more interest to visitors. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's about. But of course, these are the very trams that people want to ride on on a nice warm day. Yes. Up and down the prom, just for the ride. Not because they want to go from A to B particularly. Yeah. And, you know, it's very important we keep all these in good running condition. And this is why they're in here, because the roof is a lot better in here than it is over Absolutely. next door. So, John, just very quickly, yeah. this is something that people probably don't see very often, but this is an engineering tram. So what does this do? This, the purpose of this one is for the, the, the staff that deal with the overhead electrics, the, the, you know, either the, the pantographs or the trolley poles or the cabling for the overhead uh, pickups. This is so they can get up onto it and do the work, but it has a diesel motor in it, so it can run completely independent of any electricity. So you can turn all the electrics off so no one gets electrified but it can move up and down the tram track to wherever. Uh, so basically this is the gift shop. Yeah, it, this is our <laughs> gift shop. It, it's, it's getting better all the time. Um, we have some quite good stuff, oh. but it's been very popular. And we also have a bucket to rattle for donations, which we sometimes we do. And these, in fact, are, are, are plaques um, and trays and there are some planters there. These have all been made by Bob. Um, wow, handyman Bob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at these planters. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, you've even got a calendar and some really cool little models. This looks like a tram or a yep. skeleton of a tram. Yep, um, and what it's going to be, and hope, where is this going to go in the summer then? So this is hopefully going to. That was 1985, wow. so this is in the area of St John's Square, which is by the Winter Gardens. We all thought that this had long gone to the scrapyard in the sky. But wow. luckily, if you, just a few years ago, it was discovered under a pile of rubbish in one of the council's depots and we brought it here for safekeeping. And hopefully we'll do something constructive. Yeah. Well, we've started a big journey, uh, kindly, well, very kindly from a lot of people. We've raised, with uh, their support, almost uh, £20,000. Um, you can see the totaliser right behind me here. That's been made with depot wood. Um, and um, we've You're hit the... Bob's made that. Bob's made that. <laughs> Absolutely. Bob's amazing. No pallets are safe in this depot, I tell you. <laughs> um, because of that, though, nothing gets wasted. And that's one of the things about this project, is we've been very creative, and every problem is, is a solution. And this reflects uh, it, it perfectly, really. Our target is to try and get us to 100,000. And why 100,000? The reason is deliver something that supports a funding bid. Uh, the roof, as you've heard, is going to be 1.6 million. Uh, if we can ha have some match funding to that, that will allow us to be um, uh, more successful in that, that bid. But what it's also allowed us to do straight away, the, the 20,000 that we have raised so far, is we now have an architect, we now uh, have a surveyor, and those the work, uh, sorry, the work that those two are doing allows us to support that funding bit of some really impressive bits of detail that w we just don't have at the moment. Uh, and that sort of detail around the, the state of the building, the condition surveys, and also the vision for what the future will look like. Because there is, this is several phases, so they're eventually... So the money that you've earned, is that just from doing the tours or is that from like people donating and stuff like that? It's a mixture. So um, we've had uh, around 12,500 in terms of donations through the crowdfunder uh, and the rest of that's come through the tour receipts. So everybody who comes here, we make a point of thanking them because without them, we couldn't have that additional money. And crucially, we don't have them for the data that shows people are interested in coming. This whole point, we just talked about the, uh, the, the pallets being reused. But the whole point of this is making it a sustainable attraction. So that means that people can come, they'll enjoy themselves, but when we uh, spend all this money on it, they're going to keep coming. 
and that's really really important that's what the funder wants to know that they're not just going to give us a load of money yeah. and it just stays dormant this is going to be a really living source for people around the country around the world to enjoy so if you'd like to support them sharing the video would really help don't forget to hit subscribe give the video a thumbs up and i'll see you next time